buddies and you'll hear Louie speak about me trying to get him hurt. Well, that's true. I was trying to put that motherfucker in a hospital. He was trying to put me in a hospital. I, I changed to the, the, the morning crew because I fucking tried to fight someone in the night crew and they refused. So I said, I won't fucking train someone who won't fight me. Get the fuck up. Simon says, get the fuck up. Throw your hands in the sky. What were the biggest lessons that I learned at Westside? There's so many, you know, I'm trying to think of the biggest one. If you know off the top of your head, I, go. I have a few that I probably quote a lot to my staff, actually. Uh, yesterday I was talking to one of my coaches about this. Um, Dave said to me when, when I came, uh, I don't know, when I started training there but shortly thereafter was, um, you know, Dave said, you know, Westside's not about Louie. It's not about the equipment inside. It's not about these four walls. It's about all the people in here training. And that one has always stuck with me. And obviously he probably doesn't remember ever saying that to me. But, you know, I use that with my coaches. Uh, I use that in my business. I, I should, I used it yesterday because at the end of the day, anybody from a fitness standpoint can go buy the equipment we have and I recommend EliteFTS.com buy all their equipment um, they can buy all the equipment that we have but they can't reproduce what we have in our people and to me the reason why things were so great at Westside for me was because I was training with Dave and Jim and Chuck and Mike Rosaria and you know the groups that we had training together it was exactly right. It was the people that made it. And, and I think that's a bigger lesson, not just for your training and powerlifting, but just for life in general, is, is the people you're around are gonna dictate your success levels. Not the means that you have, not anybody trying to tell you how to be great. It's gonna be the people you surround yourself with. And, and I think that was a great lesson. Uh, the other big one I always point to, uh, George Halbert. Uh, you know, powerlifting's a marathon, not a sprint. And uh, I surely didn't listen to him. Uh, but obviously, after injuries and time, I, I learned what a what a what a great statement that is. And I think for the young guys in the sport, I was one of those guys who didn't want to listen. You know, it was you know just this. You know, fourth best hole in the world out of four meets. I wouldn't listen to nobody. And uh, you know, I paid for it. And I think that's the thing for these young guys is that it's great to have that success early on, just understand the longevity of the sport and how you can do it. And, you know, I've seen other guys do it in that longevity and really slow and in growing um, and, and you have long-term success and you're healthier for it. And I think that's another one that I think when we look at life and business, like life's a fucking marathon. Like there's going to be really shitty times and, and bad times for everybody and really good times. But if you can just keep working and keep grinding, it's like, for me, I didn't do a meet for 10 years. I did it and won world championship. But it was 10 years in between that shit. The difficult thing that I struggled with with this question and needed some time to think about it a little bit is the way it was framed was what was the biggest lesson. And I can sit here and I can list off, I could probably rip out a hundred if you wanted to talk about the things that I learned at Westside that if you want to start getting into training methodology and how to break down a lift, the how a lift can actually be a movement assessment guide in itself, <clears throat> mental strategies and all the other kind of things, but the biggest thing I would have to say is that you have to, you have to understand, and JL touched upon it a little bit, you have to understand that the process is brutal and it was not an easy gym to train in and anybody who's actually honest about at least the time that I was there I can't speak about the time that I wasn't there it was fucking brutal um, there there were so many times I wanted to rip the fucking steering wheel off of my car driving home because somebody said something that just pissed me the fuck off. And, you know, Louie knew how to just 
fucking get under every one of our skins. And it may be by him telling JL something. And then JL tells me, and I'm like, that motherfucker. And then you don't know. You know, it takes you like 10 years to figure out Lou's doing this on purpose. But then you're pissed off because he's fucking doing it on purpose. <laughs> you know, so there's, there's no win. It's just a constant fucking brutal battle. And then when you're in the gym and <laughs> we had a lot of like-minded hard-nosed motherfuckers in there that they and they hated to lose and if it was a max effort day it was a fucking competition it was a contest and we all found a fucking way to win even if even if you didn't lift the most weight that day you won because you broke your pr by more or you won because your range of motion was actually bigger than somebody else we always found a way that made that made it so we actually beat the other guy but what we were actually doing is developing a mindset of realizing that that struggle is brutal, but you got to find the good in the fight, you know, because even if you fucking work and miss the fucking max everything and tore your pec, you'd walk out saying that, fucker, you didn't train hard today. I tore my pec. Where's your fucking pec there? You walked out knowing that, you know, I fucking gave everything you fucking didn't. If you did, your bicep would be blown off. And so you find the good and the brutal and then you understand that over a period of time like jl said that longevity that brutality it doesn't fucking go away it doesn't change it fucking gets worse but your ability to be able to deal with it cope with it and to move forward changes so newer people that came in would struggle and not only did they struggle they were getting pounded even harder than everybody else because we were trying to get them to leave because we didn't fucking want them there so we would push and push and push to get them mentally stronger and then whatever they had to deal with with a meat fuck that was nothing compared to what we had to deal with in the gym because the gym was a, a you know it was like i said it was brutal they're, they're like a, there's good times i'm not going to sit here and make it sound like it was all this brutal war but the good times were in the brutality. It was in the training hard. It was in, you know, guys trying to tear each other apart. And when you hear Louis speak of, I trained with Louis and he trained, we were, everybody kind of had like little buddies, you know. So we were buddies and you hear Louis speak about me trying to get him hurt. Well, that's true. I was trying to put that motherfucker in a hospital. He was trying to put me in a hospital. That's how we saw how this had to progress. And amongst that whole brutality and progression and that, I don't want to say grind because I think that's the dumbest fucking word in the world. You know, it, it's not a grind. Everything's hard. Everything's hard for everybody. It's, it's never fucking easy. Anybody that thinks it's easy has never fucking accomplished anything or had success in anything. The, the, the key to being able to be, become the best that you can become as a lifter and business or anything else is just to not quit. You know, and to know that this is fucking hard, but it's going to always be hard. You know, and if you can't deal with the fact that it's always going to be hard, then check out. Now, understand that there are some people who are genetically inclined and don't have to work that much to be able to beat you. That's life, man. You know, you can either sit back and say that's bullshit, that fucker doesn't train hard. You can yap, 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 talk, 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 and make all the fucking excuses in the world that you want. Fact of the matter is he's got a God-given genetic ability. He's training enough to be able to get stronger, and he's kicking your ass. But what the fuck does that have to do with you and your training? Because you can sit there and make excuse after excuse after excuse. Meanwhile, you can shut the fuck up, start pounding your head against the wall, and break that five-pound PR then look for the next five pound PR. Because your PR's got nothing to do with what that other guy does until you go to compete against each other. And then that's a different thing. Um, so that's, I guess if there was a main takeaway, that main takeaway is the shit ain't ever easy. It's never gonna get easy. It was hard the first day I was in there, it, the first week I was in there, it was hard as fuck the last week I was in there. It never fucking changed, but I did. I learned how to deal with it. I learned how to deal with all that shit. It became part of it. So you could be able to take more and move forward. You know, there's a reason why people say, everybody says you get hit, you know, that stupid Rocky fucking thing. There's, you know, you get hit, it's not about how hard you get hit, it's moving forward. There's a reason why everybody fucking says that. It's true. 
And that's my main takeaway from that. I, th I think, too, one of the things that you know, Dave touched on and it reminded me of a, one of the most important things, I think, is that <clears throat> regardless of the biggest lesson, I, I think it is hard, right? Like, because depending on what you're going through, you're going to pull on a certain experience. And at that time, however you're feeling or what you're going through, that's going to relate. That's going to be your biggest lesson because whichever one's helping you at the time is going to be your fucking the biggest one at that time. Yeah. Uh, so I think when we talk about this stuff, it's a lot of stuff that, you know, basically, uh, like you talked about, the environment's brutal. Like, I mean, I, you know, I, I changed to the, the, the morning crew because I fucking tried to fight someone in the night crew and they refused. So I said, I won't fucking train someone who won't fight me. And so that's why I switched. Why? Because I wanted to fucking fight. And so, you know, the thing is, is that it, it's a brutal environment, but so is fucking life. Like, no one's walking into my fucking business going, hey, like, we just want to give you a lot of money because fucking, you know, that's how life works. So I think one of the biggest things that, that I took out of there, too, and, and, and Todd Brock actually is the one who kind of said it to me, was uh, you never want to focus on what other people are doing. It's you against the weight. Mm -hmm. And as long as you focus on you against the weight, then you will come out on top. And that's a lesson for me that is huge in business because obviously I can look around the country and say, okay, maybe some other people are, I don't, I don't know, doing more revenue than I am. Or if I look at my competition locally and say, okay, maybe they're doing a better job of this or that or whatever. But as long as I focus on me and I keep grinding to keep <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and keep getting things better. I said, I just yeah. you. Uh, it comes back to me saying yeah. back squats. So, yeah. uh, so the whole point with that, though, is that, I mean, when you talk about those competitions, I remember one of the, probably one of the most f fucking intense things I ever saw was a calf race competition. And Chuck refused to lose at a calf race competition. And I don't even know, they started putting stuff on this calf race. One, it was not fucking geared for that much weight. And they started throwing hundreds on it. And then they were stacking weights and tying bands to it to put on because no one wanted to lose in the calf raise competition. It wasn't about the calf raise, though. No, oh, fuck you. Who cares about a calf raise? Yeah. But the thing was, it got so much. Like, it was literally like, okay, someone's going to tear a calf. Mm -hmm. But no one cared because it was all about winning. And so I, I think, you know, when you're talking about those things, and I think sometimes that focusing on you against, you have to do that, you know, you come out and tear a pack, you feel good about it because you know that you worked harder than anybody. So you focus on that. Well, you reframe it. I mean, you, you, I, you, you know, as you get older, you do. Yeah. But at the time, you don't fucking care. Yeah. And so I think one of the things, though, that you learned, I, I think, as we we're talking about this, the biggest lesson is that as long as you, you know, I think when I started my business, I, I won't fucking fail because I don't fail. And that's something that every day when you walked into that gym, you knew failure wasn't a fucking option. It wasn't on the table. Because if you did, you weren't gonna fucking train there. And so for me, that's the thing, like, failure in life isn't a fucking option. And I think in that environment, that's something that was fucking bred because you, quite frankly, you couldn't be in that environment unless you had that mentality. Well, there's, you know, there's also this misconception that we always wanted to be there. And it's like we are always motivated and we showed up every day and we wanted to train our ass hard every day. When the reality of it was there are a lot of times I didn't want to fucking be there, but you know, you had to be there by 830 and it's Louis's rule. You know, if you're late, he was gonna throw your ass out. It didn't matter who the fuck you were. I saw him throw out one of our best lifters in the gym. We've been in the gym for five or six years for being five minutes fucking late. So I mean you weren't there at 830, you were there at eight o'clock. Um but there are a lot of times I didn't want to fucking be there. I can remember many times driving in like, man, there's, fuck, I just want to just go straight to work or not leave work and all this other kind of stuff. But you fucking showed up. I mean, that's kind of part of what JL is talking about, too, with, with life and, you know, the overriding lessons there is you still fucking showed up. You know, you did it anyhow. You know, you just went in and you just did it. And... You'd have a good day out of it, or maybe you didn't, but you still were fucking there. It wasn't like, oh shit, I'm not going to go in today because, you know, my bicep hurts, or I got a fucking migraine. I mean, we go in fucking with the flu puking, and I mean, it, P 
people would fucking have surgery. They'd be in this. Louis came in the same fucking day he had knee surgery. You know, to run the monolith for other people. You know, I was there the day after I had shoulder surgery. You know, and a sling. You just showed the fuck up. And when you were there, you figured out what to do, but you always showed up. That's a key thing of moving forward is you got to keep fucking showing up, even if you don't want to. And everybody, like I said, everybody's under this misconception that we all really wanted to be there. I mean, I was, four, I was there 14 years. We trained four days a week. Sometimes I was there eight days a week. You think I wanted to be there? Every fucking time you're out of your mind. You know, I wanted to be there most of the time, but a lot of the times I was just there because I had to be there. It was such an ingrained part of my identity. That's what you had to do. And to not be there would be, in my mind, drive me fucking nuts. I would feel like I let everybody else down. Worse than that, I'd feel like I let myself down. I'd spend the whole fucking day, you know. And you'd never fucking hear And I'd probably end up going in at night and then coming up with some fucking, but I never not showed up. You know, that's the thing. You just showed up. Dude. You know, the best specific thing for a beginner or a novice to do is just something like, Dave, you got like six weeks of glycogen in your system right now. You know, that, so I kind of knew it was going to be a long time.